Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and this, of course, is my better half, Shackleton the Explorer, who um, is, uh, he's a bit of a thin cat, so I've taken to feeding him a couple extra times per day, and uh, the problem is, is there's three cats in the house, and the other two are on the heavy side. So, whenever I feed this guy, the other two have figured out that, uh, you know, they want to be near the kitchen. And of course, you know, they know me and they know that I can't just give this guy food without giving them a little bit. So that's a bit of a problem I have. And he makes sure he doesn't miss anything. So he's taken to sleeping under the kitchen table to ensure that he's there in the kitchen ready when anybody is down there. You know, whether it's uh, me or, or my uh, spouse, Susan, or my kids that are at home. So anyway... Um, yeah, I have to figure out the cat psychology, and it's a bit tougher in a, in the pandemic because, you know, I'm sure the cats are kind of tired of people being around all the time, you know, in home offices and so on. But anyway, that's not what I'm going to do this entire video, talk about cats. So what I really want to talk about is sort of human, human tipping points. You know, I often talk about tipping points in the climate system whether it be the albedo in the Arctic, methane emissions, loss of Arctic sea ice, you know, collapse of the Amazon rainforest, or, you know, many, many other ones, the loss of the terrestrial uh, biosphere sink, you know, becoming a source of carbon in 20 years. That's a very concerning and worrying one, which I covered recently. But I'm going to talk all about what sort of societal tipping points we need, what sort of social tipping points we need in order to get people to actually wake up and to take strong action to try to keep Earth as a survivable planet because we're doing everything wrong. Um, you know, we go into a pandemic and there's lots of government subsidies and where do they go? More go to fossil fuel companies than anything else, you know, which is, this was a golden opportunity to put all those subsidies and money into into um, renewable energy sources, not not non-renewable energy sources, not the fossil fuel industry. So this is all about um, a, this this peer reviewed paper just came out on and the title is social tipping dynamics for stabilizing Earth's climate by 2050. So there's lots of people from the Potsdam Institute that are behind this. And I've talked about this a lot in the past. I've talked about how we need human tipping points to survive abrupt climate change. Okay, and this is the defining task for humanity. We need a worldwide transformation to carbon neutral societies. We need accelerated technological progress and policy implementations. Now, in this paper, they call it um, social tipping interactions. Um, that are required in certain subsectors of the socio-economic uh, system. So they call those STEs, or social tipping elements. For example, some of the main, they list six STEs, or social tipping elements. One is energy production and storage. And the social tipping intervention, what we need to do is remove fossil fuel subsidies and incentiv incentivize decentralized energy systems. Okay, so those things are key. STE2, human settlements. Okay, uh, we need to build carbon neutral cities or make existing cities carbon neutral cities. Financial markets is another big one, STE3. Uh, we simply divest from fossil fuels. That will make a huge difference in financial markets, giving the right incentives to get off fossil fu fuels. STE4 is the norms and values systems that people have. And uh, we need to really push on the arguments um, that are, you know, the, that reveal the moral implications of fossil fuels. And the moral impl it's immoral to continue doing what we're doing with fossil fuels because it will cause, it, it will cause and is causing undue damage and hardship and could end all human life on this planet. STE5 is the education system. 
The intervention is to strengthen climate education and engagement at the very youngest uh, ages uh, of school and work it up through the whole system that the earth is vitally important for our survival and climate change is taking it down and here's what climate change is and what we can, what is happening and what we're doing. And then STE6 is the information feedbacks. The intervention is disclose information on greenhouse gas emissions. If everything you bought at a store uh, had an, a, a greenhouse gas emission um, sticker telling you how much um, harm it was doing as, as far as climate change was concerned, it would really make us think twice. Okay, so those are the key points um, and I'm going to go and talk about them now in more detail. So here we are. Um, Let's see, let me raise my screen a little bit. Okay, so this is the paper, Social Tipping Dynamics for Stabilizing the Earth's Climate by 2050. So we need this worldwide transforma transformation to carbon neutral societies within the next 30 years. And we need to do it right now. We can't say, okay, well, we don't need to do anything for 30 years. This is absurd. We need, to, we're already hanging over the cliff. We're holding onto the edge of the cliff with our fingernails and we need to try to re return, try to, try to back off from, you know, pull ourselves up and find stable ground. Now they say accelerated technological progress and policy implementations are required to deliver emissions reductions at rates sufficiently fast to avoid crossing dangerous tipping points in the Earth's climate system. Okay, um, greenhouse gas emissions are rising um, mostly about 2% a year. This year is gonna be very large, you know, in spite of the um, COVID uh, shutdowns. Um, and we need to lower these numbers by, you know, 7% per year, okay? Um, and they talk about the STEs and the STIs, but I'm gonna go to the figures, okay? So, but preventing dangerous climate change and its devastating consequences is a defining task for humanity, okay? Um, it's a defining task, we, we don't have any choice. Okay, so this is the, um, rate of change of annual greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, so it's from, this is from 1930. Here we are, you know, present day. And these are the RCP scenarios that are listed in the um, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC reports. Okay, uh, so this is 8.5 is the worst one, which is business as usual and we're exceeding it actually. RCP six is orange, um, orange. the green one is 4.5, um, and the blue one is RCP 2.6, and these aren't even sufficient. Um, we need to go to something like this, this SSP curve, um, and drop even sharper. So we need to basically have global emissions by t in, in the next 10 years, and then have them again, and then have them again. And this is the only way that we can avoid grief above 1.5 C. Now, the pre-industrial period, they don't define here, but like most other papers, I'm pretty sure, it's never defined here. They just say pre-industrial period. And this is a big beef I have. They should say the 1880 to 1910 average, which it probably is. So if, you're, if, if you wanna to refer to the original pre-industrial period, which is the year 1750, you need to add 0 0.3 degrees to all of all of these numbers here. So we're not staying under 1.5, we're staying under 1.8, we're not staying under 2, we're staying under 2.3, okay, at, at 0.3. Now you can see that there was a large drop in the Second World War of emissions, and there, this, so this is the rate of change, this is the slope of the emissions curve, the EDT, the slope divided by E. So it puts it a percentage term. So we're hovering, here's a, here's a few percent. This is 3% increase. So we're hovering, you know, between zero and 2% increases. And we, this is the drop here. We had a drop of about 6% here, World War II. And we had a drop here with the collapse of communism, a drop from about plus 1.5 to minus 1.5, so a drop of three. 
So we need to drop 7% per year. So this is extremely tough and extremely, extremely difficult to do. But it, so, you know, we need carbon capture. We need to pull carbon out of the atmosphere and ocean in order to have any hope of doing this, plus slashing the emissions. And we need solar radiation management to cool the planet, to buy us some time to do all of these things. I've been saying that for a long time and it's becoming more and more urgent. So they talk about small interventions and big interventions having either small effects or big effects. And they give some examples. So a town mitigation plan, small intervention, small effect. But if you, tip, if you go to a huge numbers of towns, if it tips over into all the towns, for example, the feed-in tariffs in the German energy wind system, you know, it can have a big effect. Big intervention uh, that was tried was the European carbon trading carbon emission trading scheme with credits and that only had slight impact in reducing greenhouse gas emissions not what you want an elephant effect for example reducing the earth's carbon budget by means of solar radiation management geoengineering okay uh, would be sort of a, a large effect a, a big intervention a big effect okay so we'll go down here so the idea of we're talking about societal norms and what we do in society and how we need social tipping points we need human tipping points to recognize the grave risks that we face from from uh, abrupt climate change and to recognize that it's a game changer for all of us in society and that we won't be able to eat soon because we won't be able to grow enough food for the planet Okay, so here we are. So this is in terms of the system theory of tipping points. We're stuck in a little hollow here. We're stuck in a valley. This is the business as usual state. There's a lot of blocks for us to get over this. But once we, if we, if social tipping interventions are applied to lower that hill and we can get through, we can go to a decarbonized state. And of course, there's low, if there's low complexity, there's not much uh, high frequency noise on this curve and if but we we're in a highly complex society and there's there, there you go through you know one step forward two steps back two steps forward one step back right it's very um, grainy here okay um, but these are the key things these tables so you know climb we need to set climate policy and enforce it so we need this needs to be done on an international level involving international agencies, national local governments, political elites, everybody, NGOs, industry, business, the public, and we start to restrict the use of fossil fuels, have a global environmental court, produce a responsibility, a circular economy, and so on. We need to eliminate fossil fuels from most of the sectors and spheres of human existence, of human society. Information feedback is another one. You know, we need uh, more people in the scientific community, media, citizen organizations, industry to step out. And the main um, parameter would be to have the share of products and services containing greenhouse gas emissions released in public information to everyone. And that would let us choose products based on low greenhouse gas emissions, okay? Financial markets, the market value of fossil fuel extraction and industry. Um, that's the um, how the financial market can have a huge impact. So carbon taxes and permits, divesting, reinvesting, national banks warning commercial banks to reduce risk with carbon intensive investments. And this is like the carbon bubble, the market value rapidly decreasing in comparison to other investments. So fossil fuel company share prices just becoming, you know, losing investments. Um, Energy production and storage, this is huge, right? So, um, you know, the relative price of fossil fuel free energy production and storage is, um, you know, fossil fuel free energy production and storage is dropping significantly. And in many countries, it's actually lower than uh, fossil fuel prices. Okay, so that's using the market incentives knowledge system, intellectual leaders, scientific community, media, the number of people having worldviews, system worldviews accounting for the socio-ecological complexities. We need more and more people with big system views to look at all the different components and connect them and see where we're heading. Technology, digitization of the economy, values and norms is a tough one to change. 
And I'm going to continue this in a second video. Thank you for listening.